Today's class, we're gonna be talking about your shoe game and how cool your accessories are. Hey class, welcome back. I'm Mr. G, your online art professor. Today, we're going back into the Photoshop lab and we're gonna be cutting out some designs for some excellent shoe culture pieces. Now, for this project, this is a three portion piece uh, you're going to be making three shoe designs I'm shooting one video because this covers both of the steps in this one video so if, it, if there's a part two I missed something so jumping into Photoshop but what well, before we jump into Photoshop let's go over some basics here so I was trolling down online I was like I need to do a shoe project why because it's gonna be awesome you the, the shoe culture game is hard in the East Coast and the West Coast. If you're in LA, your shoe, the shoe thing, the, the shoe game is a is a staple of the culture. In Atlanta here, where, where I am, it is another staple of the culture. Is my shoe game on point? Of course it's not. No, at all. Not, not even, no, not even 10%, no. Nah. Um, I appreciate the level of artistry that people put into the shoe game, but I just, yeah, I don't get it. I don't. But at the same time, I'm, an, I'm a card guy. I'm a car guy. I like cars. Uh, my personal favorite is the 67 Chevy Impala. Why? If you know, you know. That is kiss from, whoo, chef's kiss. That's a beautiful car. For me, the shoe game does give you a really blank palette of things that you can do with it. And that's one thing that I want to bring into, into this assignment for my students. Number one, this project is kind of a, a, a post element that we did prior, which was getting into watercolor design, where we're talking about levels of transparency, levels of layers of imageries, and how you're seeing those images transfer between those layers. So what's your opacity element that you're going to be running in these? These are all little Photoshop terms because you're going to be using those in the design. Now for this project, as I said, there's three pieces you guys have got to build. I've got an entire collection of shoes that I'm putting into uh, one of our team folders so that you guys can pull those images yourself. If you are watching this and you're not one of my students, by all means, get online, Google shoe templates, free shoe templates. There's like six or seven dozen uh, websites where you can download free shoe templates, upload the image into Photoshop. Now, one thing that I was noticing is that some of these images that you're downloading are not for Photoshop, but they're for InDesign or Illustrator. So you can run it in there. I don't teach Illustrator because I don't know the program yet. I'm, I'm trying to get one of my other teachers to teach me how to do that program because I want to know. I need to know. What you guys are going to be doing is putting them into Photoshop and then you're using the pen tool. That's going to be our main tool for this class to cut out all the different pieces of the shoe and then you're going to transfer your images behind it. Now for me, I have three topics for the shoe design. Number one, the pattern. What kind of fresh pattern are you going to put on yours? Me, I went with Star Wars. Why? Because they're, it's awesome. It's awesome. Geek culture. That's what I stick with. So Star Wars is my pattern design. After that, you're gonna do a character design. Guess who I'm gonna do? It's probably the Stormtrooper. Why? Because I got a lot of pictures of it. Uh, putting a Stormtrooper in the back and then using sections of the lightsaber to bend around the piping, the line piping that I've got on the side of the shoe. And then the third one there is doing a color application. Nice thing about doing Star Wars and you're dealing with Stormtroopers and Vader, it sticks to black and white. So doing a black and white pattern across the shoe, coloring certain panels a certain color, that's the basics of it. And you're just getting in there and now you're testing out what colors work together, what colors do not work together. Should you use the divide element and do the flip of that color? So if you did yellow across it and then you want to do the divide the back the negative element of that one color you should end up with purple or at least a variant of purple because color space and color spectrum is all numbers and ones and zeros it, it's a it's a science thing it's a computer science thing we just haven't gotten to it yet so let's get into the build of how i break everything down with the pen tool and then putting the patterns in place of it all right, getting into the shoes now. Now, I've gotten three different shoes that you guys are working on, but you're all using the exact same process across the board for everything that we're doing. Now, for me, the number one thing that I've noticed about these shoes is when you brought it in, it was brought in from um, this one file. We're going to break down each individual section on the shoe, but the way that we're doing it for this project is we're going to be focusing on using the pin tool to isolate all the different layers of the overall image. Now, using that pen tool here, 
I'm going to isolate all those sections and what I'm going to do is zoom in control plus to zoom in really closely and I'm going to mark around all the different pieces uh, just marking it along those straight lines now here's the thing when you're dealing with the with the pen tool you can do several dots like I'm doing you can modify it you can actually bend and twist the line itself I'm not going into that why because it's a lot more steps and I don't have the skill set to do some of that pieces. So what I'm doing is I've selected that piece. Once I've closed that, that ring, close the loop of the pen tool, I'll go up to the top and hit mask. That's going to create that mask system where that piece is isolated out. Then uh, I'm changing the, the title of that one layer. So that one was the swoosh. Now I'm going into the middle section, this middle bit of the flap. And I'm going over the swoosh in this one because it doesn't matter that I'm, I'm deducting it because in my head, the swoosh will be on top of this portion of the shoe layer. Uh, then going around each of the eyelets to air holes there, I'm gonna mask those out as well. So when I've, I've masked those out, close out those windows to make sure that I'm masking out just the portions that I need. Changing the name, got that one done, the middle patch. Then turning on just the layer that I'm working with. What I'm doing is on each layer, I'm hitting Control J to duplicate. You can also hit uh, Alt and drag it up to, uh, to create that other layer. That's how I'm duplicating all those layers very easily. Uh, and then again, using the pen tool, walking the pen tool all the way around each individual section. I'm not taking too, too big of a jump from each time. If I make a mistake, hit Control Z to undo the one piece that you just did. Again, hit mask, see what I can see what I've gotten done and then changing that layer right now we're working on the toe patch. It's really it this is all we're doing for this entire section of the project. We're just getting comfortable with the pen tool and doing the pen tool to mask out individual sections. It's it's really focusing on just that one tool. So we're not doing anything more intensive than that but you are going to be doing this for each individual shoe again do not do the same shoe for each project uh, because i want to see three different shoes done i want to see three different styles done on each shoe so for the so let's go over the styles real quick number one the first one that i'm working on this one will be the pattern technique now for the pattern technique, I've gotten some Star Wars patterns that have isolated around the overall piece, and I'm going to use those to cover the backing. Um, what I like to do when I was looking for these, you want to look for on Google when you've put in your patterns. Uh, again, try and find a pattern that has something that has a lot of different options to it, a lot of different colors, a lot of different textures to it. And when you're finding that image, you definitely want to find the highest pixel count that you possibly can. So when you're looking at pixels on the image, so each end of image says how many pixels are on this one piece, you wanna make sure that you have added, your, your pixel count is really, really high. So nothing in the 500 range, definitely wanna to go to something towards the two, three, 4,000 pixel range um, so that you can get the most amount of pixels in that image. The reason that we do that is because if you blow it up, if you have a certain size that you want to get, this creates a smoother looking image. You don't want an image that's going to be um, off and just not work with the one that you're doing. So uh, next next step. So I did notice uh, that I made a mistake on that one. So I'm actually I'm going to go back and redo a section because I didn't uh, select the layer separate from the bottom layer. So these are little, I mean, I want you guys to see my mistakes also because my mistakes help you understand why I do certain things. Also, you're like, oh, Mr. G did this. This is this is why he said do it this way. Uh, that's exactly why we do these, do the, uh, I add in those mistakes. So because I didn't add, separate out those layers, I messed up that portion. Again, to separate the layers, you're going to hit um, Control J to duplicate the layer that is underneath, and that's going to give you that image. It's going to clean out the image a lot easier, so that as you're cutting in those different sections, you can you can take care of uh, adding in different layers of the same image that's from the one below. Again, I'm using my master shoe image to work off of each time, so I'm just duplicating that layer. I'm not duplicating the layer that I've already cut. Those are little side steps that you got to remember. Lots of the laces work was uh, was a little difficult there, trying to cut in out of all the little bits of the shoestring so I can make sure that I've isolated out the images best as possibly can. Um, 
those are just little helpful tips again zooming in so you can you guys can see the um the shoe uh the eyelet there so you got the laces section and i'm just going to continue off working on these pieces just like this Okay, now we're starting to add in our pattern, dropping in those patterns so I can see it and just figuring out what pattern goes to which piece. So I'm, I'm having to duplicate this pattern several times. So I'm putting a pattern on each one and I'm masking out, not seeing it by clicking the eyes to where I don't want it. Hitting Control T to change the shape of the pattern, figuring out where the pattern is gonna be isolated, where it's gonna be located, using the opacity to drop the opacity so I can see in each section a lot easier. Um, using the at the top there there is a uh, a grid over us over a line that's going to give me more of a change where i can change the the shape of the overall image if i hit edit and then scroll down under edit there's this thing called the puppet tool and now i can tie in each individual section of the piece and i can put little push pins in it and that will help me shift where that image how that image is wrapped around the the line the 
bit of the shoe below it. So that's the thing I'm looking at here right now. I'm stretching out the image so it, it bends to the shape of the shoe. I want to get that nice curvature in the shoe so I, I can see how that stuff lines up. So putting in here and then changing that, that form. I want to have a couple of the eyes of the stormtroopers poking through the swoop or poking around the swoop. So putting the push pins in so it actually rolls to the shape of the of the piece that's why i'm using that different mask there uh notice how i also changed to uh color inversion so it goes from black and white to white and black and i know it sounds the same but it is different because i'm changing what color goes where putting the swoop on top then uh by isolating it out so the swoop is nice and clean looking it looks like all the pattern is, is underneath it but you and i both know i didn't do it that way it's all about the way that i cut it in there uh, moving over to the brush tool, putting a little bit of black on a blank layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the black in there and then I'm going to change the layer structure instead of a normal layer. I'm going to change this down to color screen or overlay. And that's going to give a little bit of shadow effect inside of the image or inside of the shoe so, to finish it off. Again, as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at what colors are, do I want to keep? What colors do I want to flip more? Why do I have that blue on that image? I don't know. And I don't know where that one came from, but it didn't come out the way that I wanted it to. So when you export out your image, again, think about the way that the colors are, are lined up and how you're going to be printing those pieces out. So again, I'm flipping the, uh, the back heel section and I've got the back section there with Vader's head. Got it. So it looks nice and crisp and clean. So I hope this was a simple tutorial for you. Remember, you're th doing three shoes, three different styles. One is a pattern technique, one is a color design, and one is a character design. So how you lay those things out and how you're showcasing your interesting shoes, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Awesome guys, again, you see the basics of where I'm taking the pen tool, cutting those sections out of the shoe. That's all we're really doing across all three of these, pr these processes. You're just changing up the different theming for those different shoes. Now, for each shoe design that you do, you are picking a different shoe. So I don't wanna see just a low heel all the way across, uh, low heel, high top, maybe a, uh, I don't wanna say a flat or a tennis shoe, but something else. So there, and there are different, differences between tennis shoes and sneakers it doesn't look like much there is a difference i do want you to get really three very different shoes overall that is what i would prefer um stick to more variants because that's going to make your life a lot easier you're doing three of them you don't want to do the same ones over and over it does get monotonous and boring so mix it up that's my tips for you but as always let's go ahead and wrap up class today as for all of my outstanding students there don't forget to take care of your homework which is like subscribe share all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers friends students as we possibly can this is from people who are not in my class you guys know that right uh you guys uh if probably had a question come or concern during today's class so raise those hands in the comments below happy to answer those questions from my classmates as always i will see you guys next class but until then later guys